Sony's raising the price of the PS5. They're also making things better for PC gamers and the Windows update that is saving Ryzen apparently isn't. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, August 28th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about the price hike that's hitting the PlayStation 5, at least over in Japan. It's a price raise of just 19%, which means that the console is now gonna cost about 550 US dollars, and it takes place on September 2nd. Sony is saying that this is taking place due to challenging economic decisions without actually saying what that means. And I've seen a lot of speculation that this could either be from the volatility that's been going on with Japan's economy and the yen in the recent months, or it could potentially be due to the success of Black Myth Wukong. And because China is bringing in all of their PlayStation 5s from Japan specifically, it's making it so that the success of that game is selling out stock in Japan. And so by them raising the price, they could potentially hold some stock for their Japanese customers. It's an intriguing thing that's happening, especially as the PS5 Pro is allegedly going to be debuted just next month. They've already slimmed down the PlayStation 5, reduced costs, reduced materials, and they also have its upgrade and successor coming out later this year. So to raise the price by that much right now is incredibly strange, but it is just regionally dependent. It doesn't look like it's hitting everywhere across the world, but there, there are some intriguing reasons as to why it could be taking place. But in case you play PlayStation games on a monitor or you play PC games, you're a PC gamer, you should check out today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Wanwo and their HNDS7 dual monitor mount. Wanwo is the best selling monitor mount brand on Amazon and for good reason. The HNDS7 is super easy to set up and install and instantly opens up your desk space. Traditional monitor stands can be bulky and intrusive when it comes to your workspace, or they sit too low, causing you to look down, resulting in neck pain and general annoyance. Wanwo monitor mounts allow you to fully utilize your desk space, as well as lift your monitor to your comfortable viewing position, reducing strain over a long period of use. In the UFD office, Kyler has been using the HNDS7 for a bit, and it's been great. He opened up a ton of desk space to fill with useful gadgets like his stream deck or various candy related figurines. Why are you like this? Why do you do this? What is so special about her? If we take a look at my super messy and cluttered desk, it's clear I'm not benefiting from the extra space that Wano has provided Kyler. We gotta change that soon. Additionally, while other items on Kyler's desk unfortunately did not pass the shake test, the Wanwo arms stayed strong thanks to their intensive seismic testing. The arms themselves feature a smooth and easy to operate gas spring mechanism that extends out to 25.59 inches and vertically up to 21.65 inches, perfect for larger desks and achieving your ideal viewing angle. These gas spring mechanisms are tested over 20,000 times to ensure the ultra durable experience you expect from Wanwo. Each arm is also capable of holding up to 35 inch monitors and 26.4 pounds, so you can include items like webcams or light bars easily without compromising stability. If you're looking to transform your workspace, then go with the best monitor arms for the job. You can pick up the Wanwo HNDS7 dual monitor mount today via the link in the description below. You can use code UFD20 for a $20 exclusive discount. The first 50 orders also get a mystery gift worth over 40 bucks. Huge thank you to Wanwo for sponsoring today's video. And while you're playing your PlayStation game on the Wanwo monitor, you could also do that on PC with the new PlayStation accessories app that just dropped for Windows. This is supposed to be for for DualSense and DualSense Edge controllers. This was previously the firmware updater application for PC, but now it's been overhauled and upgraded to do a little bit more. You can customize and set custom profiles for the very expensive $200 DualSense Edge controller, but one of the things that was discovered by a lot of people as this thing rolled out is that you can now do Bluetooth updates to the DualSense controller, which is something that you can't even do on the PS5 right now. You have to hardwire it via USB-C in case you want to do a firmware update, whereas now on PC, you can do it wirelessly. Very nice. And we'll see if Reese's wires got reattached because he texted me right before this episode of Hot News saying, guys, I might be MIA tomorrow. Power just went off and we could hear an intense electrical sound followed by a big boom at the substation next door. So, uh, you know, just just South African things. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and we have some deals for you today. Starting off with this NZXT Relay Wired Gaming Headset, available in black for only $49.99, making it $50 or 50% off. But then looking back a little, we have the Intel Core i9-12900K desktop processor, going for only $274.99 with the included promo code, taking $90 off the top. And then lastly, we have this Asus VivoBook Go laptop, featuring a 15.6 inch 1080 
1080p OLED display, an AMD Ryzen 5 7520U, 16 gigs of DDR5 and a 512 gig SSD for only $449.99, making it $100 off. And it blows my mind that you can get a laptop with an OLED display for cheaper than some dedicated OLED displays. But hey, them's the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, or thanks not, Reese, but I'm also thanking the leaker that's talking about the RDNA 4 GPUs we covered in yesterday's episode of Hot News, the first known benchmarks coming out from the RX 8000 series. Now we have some more details that are swirling in the rumor mill about how much VRAM and the speed of that RAM is going to be on the next generation AMD GPUs. So the high-end 8800 XT is supposed to have 18 gigs of VRAM coming in at 20 gigabits per second. The 8700 XT would have the same amount, but slower at 18 gigabits. And the 8600 XT would be down to 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 19 gigabits per second. Some of this is an increase from the current generation. Some of it's not a change at all. And if you look at the 7600 XT, that has 16 gigs of VRAM. If you're dropping to 12, technically that's a decrease, but on that classic card, I'm not necessarily sure that you need to be up to 16 at that point, but it's not necessarily looking like AMD is gonna knock it out of the park unless pricing is incredible on it. But one of the things that people did think AMD knocked out of the park was this Windows 24 H2 update. There were plenty of videos that circulated about how much extra performance you could get if you just updated, up to 36% in some games, on average 10 to 11%. But as you start scouring, especially from well-known people in the industry like one Usmus who has developed Ryzen tools to actually enhance memory overclocking and make it so that your Ryzen chip performs better, they're finding that this actually doesn't do anything different. It actually is not improving performance depending on how your whole system is set up. So even in responding to somebody who saw a 7800X 3D, massive jumps of 10 to 30% in some instances, one of the things that got noted in that was his speeds beforehand were like way lower than everybody else's. They were Zen 3 level performance for a 7800X 3D, which doesn't make any sense. So he was nerfed in some other way. And some of the explanation that I've been seeing floating around there, especially with people reporting basically no change in a lot of their CPUs is that this is actually not dependent on the update itself, but rather how you have configured Windows. If you're running a default Windows setup with your Windows 11, then 24H2 might actually yield you that better performance. However, if you've been tweaking your Windows setup in order to optimize performance all along, you may see no difference at all. So it really just comes across as to what is your situation at home. If you've been tweaking, this is a nothing thing for you. If you're not prone to tweaking, then this could actually be potentially helpful to you, but helps to explain why there's some discrepancy going out there. Overall, for the average person who's running on AMD CPUs, this is gonna be a net positive where you're gonna be able to see that, but it does help to explain why there might be some mismatch in reporting that's going on with the newest update for Ryzen CPUs. A net boon overall, but not necessarily gonna be great for everybody. And let's see if you guys were great in yesterday's comments. We got Spotted Hair saying, let's be honest, the number that matters the most will be the price tag. How many times has AMD shot the themselves in the foot chasing ingredient or pricing every time. I'd argue nearly every time. The 7900 XTX was arguably not that bad, but still quite expensive. $1,000 for a graphics card, yikes. Then Greenstone Gecko saying the 8000 series GPU leak was probably an engineer doing a very specific test. If this was actually meant as a stress test, we'd be seeing higher numbers. I, I agree, which is why, you know, it was the first test, not an important one that you need to take seriously, but it was a relevant one that we need to see. And we got Spoots saying, the secret to owning an AMD GPU is to completely ignore any rumor, leak, or community-driven hope and just buy their discount in last gen, likely with two or three free games. C7700 XT for $390 with three games currently. The games are all right right now, but AMD does have some banger game bundles, all right? That I'm not I'm not saying that they haven't. I mean, they, they definitely have been rocking it, but so is Nvidia's doing well, the, the Wukong included bundle. Intel's not bad with Star Wars Outlaws, if that's uh, the type of game that you wanna be playing. The game bundles are nice, but also they could apply only to the new generation if they wanna incentivize for people to pick those up instead of the last gen. So, you know, don't necessarily trust that you're gonna get free games all the time. And then we got, I don't see why anyone's believing those 8,000 benchmarks. I mean, it's literally over six times worse than the 79 XTX. That OpenCL score is the same as an RX 570. I mean, come on. 
there's nothing to believe. They likely are very real. It's not necessarily that they're fake numbers. It's just that they're not relevant for gaming performance. These are the first numbers that are coming out. And as I kept saying in yesterday's episode of Hot News, it is very much like a hurricane forecast. We really are just starting to see the first whiffs of something churning out in the tropics, making it so that we can estimate, hey, it's it's on its way. It's gonna arrive that first benchmark not to be taken as any indication of performance, just an indication that active development and testing and benchmarking is now taking place. And I expect that as we go further and further into the months, probably sometime around November or December, we're gonna start seeing higher performance that's more indicative of where the final GPUs are gonna land, kind of like right before landfall on a hurricane. As you get closer to the place where it's going to hit, you have more certainty about what's going to, to happen. So that's how I like to situate it. They're, they are believable. They are real. But as far as indicative of whether or not it's going to be good for gaming, I, I don't think that I tried to paint myself as uh, saying that these were going to be the game members. So I'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow then.